Well, it's good to be in Texas, and um, we are here because obviously it is a very important state, and we are here to really highlight that, sadly, um, the elected leaders of Texas, a lot of them, have made Texas ground zero in this fundamental fight for the freedom of women to make decisions about their own body. So tonight we will be discussing the impact of that, not only to the women of Texas and their families, but to people around the country because of Trump abortion bans. And I do believe it is critically important to acknowledge that this is not just a political debate. This is not just some theoretical concept. Real harm has occurred in our country. A real suffering has occurred. People have died. And it is important to highlight this issue because this is among the most critical issues that the American people will address when they vote for who will be the next president of the United States. So I will be talking about um, the harm. I will be talking about those who have been directly impacted. And I will also tonight be talking with the American people about the power that you, the American people, have to make a decision about the future course of our country. And do we all agree that there are just certain decisions the government should not be making for individuals and their families? Um, I also do want to address the comment that uh, Donald Trump made about America being the trash can of the world, the, whatever he said, something along those lines. Uh, you know, it's just another example of how he really belittles our country. This is someone who is a former president of the United States who has a bully pulpit. And this is how he uses it, to tell the rest of the world that somehow the United States of America is, 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 is trash. And um, I think, again, the President of the United States should be someone who elevates discourse and talks about the best of who we are and invests in the best of who we are. Not someone like Donald Trump who is constantly demeaning and belittling who the American people are. America deserves better. And I'm happy to take any questions. Ma'am, you're here to talk about reproductive rights uh, in Texas, not exactly a swing state uh, in the last two weeks here. Um, but this is an issue that a lot of voters are coming out to vote potentially for you on. But if you don't have a Congress that will codify Roe, like you've been saying on the trail, what specifically is your plan to expand reproductive rights in this country? Well, when Texans vote for Colin Aldred for the United States Senate, we will be in a position where we actually will be closer to being able to put back in place the protections of Roe v. Wade. And as I have said, and it is my pledge, when Congress passes a bill putting back in place reproductive freedom, I will sign it into law. But if you don't have a friendly Congress, there's no plan B, there's no other plan? We keep fighting. And our country, America, has a history of understanding. We don't give up the fight for freedom. We do not give up the fight when it comes to some of the most basic freedoms any individual in our country has a right to expect, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. Madam Vice President, staying on Congress, Politico is reporting a House Freedom Caucus leader says that North Carolina should consider giving Trump its electors before votes are counted because the Helene damage was in predominantly Trump counties. What's your reaction to language like that? America deserves to have leaders who respect the importance of one of the pillars and foundations of our democracy, which is free and fair elections, and that they are not manipulated by elected leaders for the sake of their own political future or their own political uh, uh, strategy for how they themselves want to succeed. This has to be about what's in the best interest of the American people. And one of the big issues in this election and in the next 11 days is do you want a president who on one hand in the former President Donald Trump tried to undo the will of the people, incited a violent mob to attack the United States Capitol where 140 law enforcement officers were injured and some were killed? Or do you want a president who respects the will of the people, free and fair elections, and the right of the people to make a decision about who are their leaders? Uh, some Democrats are concerned that you've pivoted too far away from talking about the economy and really prioritizing that. 
in these final days of the election that you could end up losing some progressive voters and some working class voters because of that. What do you say to those people, especially ones who might be concerned that you know doing a big closing argument speech at a place like the Ellipse may be leaning more into talking about the threat of Trump to democracy and not his threats that you see to the economy? One of the things that I love about the American people is um, we can hold many thoughts at once. And one of the highest priorities for the American people right now is bringing down cost, and that is the priority of my agenda and will be the priority of my work when I'm elected President of the United States. My priority includes fighting for our democracy, including fighting for the freedom of people to make decisions about their own body, including what we must do to speak out against threats to our democracy, what we must do to speak up in defense of our allies around the world on important international rules and norms such as sovereignty and territorial integrity. All of these issues are issues that affect and concern the American people, and I will continue to speak on all of them. And uh, Jamie Dimon wants to be a part of your cabinet. Have you talked to him about that, and do you think Wall Street should be a part of your cabinet? We have 11 days to go. I do not have a cabinet yet. <laughs> and so the decisions I'm making are all about what I will be doing and um, what we will be doing to remind the American people of the power of their vote. So you have thought about that? I have not. Madam Vice question. President, have you voted yet? Have you, when I have will not you voted have? yet, but I, I, it's, on my, it's on my priority list for these next few days. Ma'am, one quick question. Um, Mitch McConnell and Speaker. Speaker um, Mike Johnson uh, put out a statement comparing rhetoric that you have been using, uh, comparing it to the man who's accused of an attempted assassination on your opponent, Donald Trump. Do you take their criticism seriously? Well, listen, we all must speak out against any form of political violence, and I'm very clear about that. No one should be the subject of violence, much less political violence. But the American people deserve to be presented with facts and the truth. And the fact and the truth is that some of the people closest to Donald Trump when he was president, generals, including most recently John Kelly, a four-star Marine general, have been very clear about the danger and the threat that Donald Trump poses to America and the fact that he is unfit to serve. And the American people deserve to hear that and know about that so they can make a decision based on what's in the best interest of themselves and their families. We talked to a lot of voters, some who are undecided, and while they are turned away from Donald Trump, they also have told us that um, they felt like they haven't heard enough of your policies specifically. Do you feel that in your messaging in these final days of the election, you're striking the right balance against Trump and talking about the specifics of your own policy enough? Th that is a balance that must be struck. There's no question about that. And I invite everyone who's watching to go to KamalaHarris.com where you will see 80 pages of our policies on a number of issues that include, again, as my priority, what we're going to do to bring down the cost for American families, including the cost of housing, the cost of groceries, the cost of child care, the cost of home health care for seniors. And I will continue to talk about also what we must do to understand the threat that Donald Trump poses to our democracy and our future and our security. You're ready Thank for Beyonce? Thank you. Ma'am, you ready for Beyonce? Uh, more to follow. Thank you.